All right, let's talk about Montez Sweat, the newest member of the Chicago Bears. There's a lot of talk about that trade. My initial reaction was I kind of really liked it from Chicago's perspective, but a lot of people did not. So let's talk about who Montez Sweat is as a player, what he's going to bring to Chicago, and is this a good move? By the Bears. Let's start off with some stats. We can start off with just traditional box score stats. You see that he's been pretty consistent over his career. These numbers, you look at these and say, okay, you know, just sh shy of a 10 sack guy pretty much every year. This year, he's on pace to get, you know, a career high in sacks. So it does feel like he's kind of a fringe 10 sack guy. Although, you know, if you follow this channel, you know, I'm kind of big on there's a lot better stats to measure edge rushers than just sacks. Sacks can be highly misleading. Uh, you know, you go up against a bad tackle and get like three sacks can, can completely inflate your uh, numbers. Like all stats in football, there is, you know, so much dependency on the situation around you. So there are better stats to use. For example, something like pro football focus grade is something that I think is pretty good. I think these things tend to be pretty uh, accurate, especially when it comes to defensive linemen. And you see that his numbers have been pretty consistently good. You know, uh, for one thing, one of the numbers you like is that three out of the first four years he's been in the league, over 700 snaps. So he's playing a decent amount of football and putting up good production. Uh, you know, again, rookie year kind of came in and was okay, but then from that point on, a grade of 80, you know, the shortened season for him, a grade of 75, and then a grade of 86.4 last season, now back to uh, 76.8 this season. But he's kind of floated around there, mid-70s to low 80s, seems to be what you expect for him. That's a good edge rusher, and traditionally, those edge rushers go for more than a high second round pick. I think about Bradley Chubb just last season who went for a first round pick, right? Well, let's get into some film because again, we can look at pro football focus stats and all that stuff. We can look at box score stats. At the end of the day, uh, there's no better way in, in getting a true evaluation of a player than just watching film. So let's watch some film. Uh, this play is an interesting one where it's going to be a handoff to the offense's left. So towards the right side of the screen. And in a play like this, Usually, the reason why, you know, they're going to leave Sweat unblocked on this play, and the reason why is kind of obvious, right? You can't block everybody. Well, who does it make sense to leave unblocked? How about an edge rusher on the other side of the field? And on top of it, you have uh, Fields potentially going to fake as though he's going towards the top of the screen to hopefully help sell that it could be in that direction. However, Sweat knows he has a teammate to the left of him, so Fields is not his responsibility. So watch Sweat run in. I mean, look at that, you know, acceleration to get, you know, meet the halfback right there and make a quick tackle. Is that a good situation? Sure. But at the same time, you know, when you're in a good situation, that allows you to make, you know, that gives you an opportunity to make big plays. And that's what Sweat was able to do. Over the course of a football game, you're going to be in good situations here and there. You want to be able to make the most of it. Also heading over here, this is another interesting one where he's going to be going up one-on-one -on -one against a Chicago Bears right tackle. And it's, it's interesting. I didn't do this intentionally, but uh, I just sort of realized that, you know, the clips I'm using for this video are against Chicago. So, you know, there you go. Maybe part of why the Bears wanted to make this trade is they saw how well he played up close and personal. But anyways, again, it's Darnell Wright, the rookie for the Bears. That's who Sweat is going up against. And watch what's going to happen here. So Fields takes a snap. He fakes a handoff. And right here, you see that Montez Sweat, you know, engages contact. Nothing too notable at this point. But what he's about to do is he has his left hand on Wright's sort of right shoulder pad area. That's what he's going to do here. And Sweat, you know, he's just such a... He has uh, really long limbs, right? The guy's six seven, So he's going to use that to his advantage. Watch him push off right towards the outside. Then he's able to, again, use his athleticism to get over towards fields. At the end of the day, so much of being a good pass rusher is going to be having good hands. And that's exactly what Sweat has for the Washington Commanders. Like this plays another example. We're once again going up one-on-one -on -one against Darnell right here. So, okay, one-on-one -on -one matchup, simple enough. There is a tight end who's, uh, you know, kind of in that area, but he's going to be running around. So don't worry about that. Pure one-on-one -on -one matchup. Watch how once this play begins, you see how right off the bat, the contact is engaged, and it's going to be Sweat's right hand on this play. The right hand, really not what it's doing right now, but what it's about to do. Watch his right hand. Watch how he slips it underneath Darnell Wright's right hand, and does it so quickly and so, uh, you know, strongly that Wright is not able to get really any hand placement here. It's worth mentioning with this move, known as a rip move, for Wright, you are allowed to, since you kind of get your hand is now in a holding position due to the move that Sweat 
pull it off, you are allowed to hold here. Like this is a legal play. You can't just stay doing that. You do have to get off. But you know, for a moment, you are allowed to do that. But he's not even positioned to do that because it was so well won right at the line by Sweat. As you see, Sweat is able to get over, and while well, he doesn't end up making the sack on that play, again, like I said, there's better stats to use than sacks. What I look for when I watch film of a player is how consistently are you winning, and Montez Sweat is consistently winning. And also just things like this, more simple things, but still important things. So what's going to happen is you see where he is on the field, and it's going to start off very wonky. Watch as Sweat, right off the bat, there's kind of a you know, fake pass there. He sort of was you know playing it, make sure that he can get his hands up if it was thrown there. But the ball was not thrown there. Now you see that Sweat is going to say, okay, well, let me just try to bull rush Darnell right here. Let's just do that, see if we can make something happen. On the other side of the field, there is pressure coming towards field's direction. So for Sweat... It would be very easy for him to kind of get his, you know, put his head down, push the offensive lineman back and see what he can do. But instead, watch him notice this. He reaches out and he helps bring fields down. Listen, I'm assuming that goes down as a half a sack, which is, again, part of why sacks are a weird stat, because like obviously that's not quite as impressive as just beating a tackle off the line. But when you can beat a tackle off the line, when you are capable of doing that, and you bring this to the table, there's, there is added value in all of that. So, yeah. As a whole, that's how I view Montez Sweat. I think he's a really good player. I think he is someone that is, you know, if you're going to pay an edge rusher, he's a fine guy to pay, in my opinion. Uh, I've kind of beaten the drum a while that, like, it's not always the best idea to m build a team around edge rushers. A lot of times, teams will go out and overpay or overvalue edge rushers. And I think that's why I'm kind of pleasantly surprised by this from Chicago standards. Because getting Montez Sweat, to me, it's like, I don't know, kind of someone who can be a number one edge rusher, but you love as a number two edge rusher type of talent. Usually, those guys go for a lot more than just a early second round pick. And I get that a lot of people are kind of having Chase Claypool flashbacks. It's a completely different situation. Montez Sweat is like, he's been a great player now for five seasons. Like, you feel pretty good about that. Is he going to fix this defense? Of course not. There's plenty of issues on this defense, and there's plenty of things that need to be fixed, but you, you know, one way to fix it is get, getting good players, and while a lot of people are going to say, well, why are you trading for a guy you have to pay in free agency? Guys like Montez Sweat don't hit free agency. They don't, because some people are saying, well, maybe he wouldn't have re-signed of Washington. That's possible, but they have the franchise tag on the table, so even if you waited till this offseason season someone's going to trade for him, right? Like you're not, you're still going to have to give up value then because, you know, Washington has the threat of franchise tagging him. You weren't going to get a Montez Sweat type player in free agency. That almost never happens, you know, and usually when these things happen, it involves a trade for them to get there, right? I mean, think about like Yannick Ngakwe, right? He was a perfect example of someone where, you know, he demanded a trade, but, you know, the, the team that had him sort of, or he didn't demand a trade. He didn't want to be re-signed, but the team said, you know what, we're going to uh, get some value. So they franchise tagged him and then traded him, right? Like that's how these things work. You're going to have to give up some value to get a player of Montez Sweat's caliber. You just are uh, an early second round pick is not the worst thing in the world. He's he, Sweat's a much better player than you would have gotten with that second round pick and you have the cap space to do this so I don't hate the move I really don't uh, but I do like it from Washington's perspective as well those are kind of my thoughts on all of it what do you think let me know in the comments below always love hearing from you and of course as always thanks for watching